Hello and welcome back to my tutorial series where I take you through my steps of creating a realistic 3D portrait. Sorry for the long delay between uploads. I'll chalk that down to being a college student. It's very hectic right now. To make up for that, you can expect the final two parts of this tutorial series within the next three weeks. So click your notification bell so that you don't miss that. In this part, I will be taking you through the process of how I set my model up in Blender, the shading and some lighting and rendering. First things first, we import the model OBJ. I usually keep the head model as large as 2 meters due to it working better with the subsurface shader. But over time, the shader has gotten better and there is really no need for this now. It's just down to personal preference. I like to dynamish the standing hair model from ZBrush and import that as well. The next step I take is to create a new material and start with a principled BSDF node. I change the subsurface method from random walk to random walk fixed radius. This gets me a better result. Then I plug in a normal map node into the normal map socket and drag all the corresponding texture maps into their allotted slots. For all the texture maps except for the diffuse, I make sure the input color space is set to non-color. I then bring in a hue saturation node, plug the diffuse map into its color input. Switch it to the EV viewport rendering mode and control shift click on the hue saturation node. Note that for the control shift click to work, you need to have the node rankler add-on enabled. This then allows me to preview only the color outputs from the hue saturation node, which I'll use to make adjustments. I then slightly increase the saturation and plug it into the subsurface scattering color. The next thing I do is to simply hit Ctrl Shift on the principal shader and watch the model come to life. Well, not quite. First of all, I'm not liking the lighting. So I add a spot lamp, turn on contact shadows, turn on scene lights, scene world, and slap on a good HDRI map. I bump up the strength of the light and move it till I like the position somewhat. I then switch to cycles. The first thing I notice is that it's too glossy. So I lob in a color ramp node between the roughness node and the principal shader. It's a black and white node so the brighter it is, the rougher the model gets and the darker it is, the smoother or glossier the model gets. What I end up doing is making the darkest point less dark, turning it into a bit of grey by turning the color of the left handle from black to grey. I change the interpolation to B spline and adjust it till it looks fine like my reference. I'm happy with the skin for now and move on to the eyes. To speed up my workflow in a way that I don't have to create eyes over and over again, I bought a really good library of eyes from the Flip Normals digital marketplace and used that to replace the standings I had in the model. Side note. Eyes are usually rotated about 3 to 5 or so degrees outwards. I then made a few adjustments in the nodes to bring out the red in the eyes and it was good to go. The conical was essentially a red material with a red subsurface coloring node and some low roughness. I could make it more detailed but it's not that noticeable. I didn't notice the pupils weren't as visible as I wanted to, so I lifted the eyelid model with some proportional editing and got them to where I wanted. I didn't really bother about making the adjustments perfectly symmetrical, because guess what, nature doesn't either. I then copy and paste in some assets I use in most of my models, which include teeth and gums that I hand sculpted and textured strips of mesh that hold the eyelash hair particles, a tear line mesh which has a glass material and an alpha mask with low roughness to simulate the look of water, and an eyebrow mesh 
from the V face pack that I attached to a mesh cage with the mesh deform modifier. I move this into place and take a look at it in rendered view. After looking at the model, I notice I'm not liking the level of detail on the lips. So I open up Substance Painter, reproject some textures from a texture in XYZ map and use that to drive the normal, specular and make adjustments on the color map. I brought this back into Blender, set up a camera, some lighting and started rendering with different HDRIs. Using the human meta rig function, I scale up and match the Blender rig to the face. There's some tutorials out there of how to use the rig as it comes with the Blender Rigify add-on that must first be enabled in the add-ons as well. Note that the eye bones must be at the center of the eyes and rotated 5 degrees to match the eyes. After all bones are in place, go to the object data properties. Here you want to hit the generate rig button. This gives a fully functioning rig with the needed controls. The face, tear line, eyebrow, control mesh and eyelashes should then be parented to the rig with automatic weights, while loose parts like the individual eyeballs and jaws should be parented to their respective bones. The eyes have a special rig step where part of the rig is unhidden in the object data properties tab under layers where the eye bone is visible and can be parented by the eye mesh to avoid any weight painting problems. I can then use this rig model to create subtle expressions or make changes to the model. Also, if you are in need of checking the Blender eye rig, there's tutorials out on YouTube on how to do that. While rendering, I noticed that the fine details were too intense, so I hopped into the shading tab and reduced the normal map strength to about 0.7. This gave a more subtle look and allowed for more natural looking skin. After doing a quick makeup paint over of my rendered portrait in Photoshop, I hopped into Substance Painter to paint some eyeliner, eyeshadow, lipstick and top it off with glitter. This is the final look at this point. In the next part, we will be discussing the hair and accessory creation process. Thank you and don't forget to like and subscribe.